Hey guys, Steve at Muse Themes. New widget ready for you today called the Video Carousel Widget. So as you know, a carousel is typically a slider or selection of rotating images, but in this case, we were able to build a widget that used videos for the carousel. So you can use self-hosted videos in MP4 format, or you can use YouTube or Vimeo as well. So it's really powerful and really flexible in that sense. And as you can see in the demo here, we have this kind of slideshow gallery of images. And if we just hit the play button on there, the video of course plays. We also have a close button to bring you back to the gallery. We can also look at this widget in a full width format. So if we just stretch the widget out to the full canvas size, you can see that now we have a much larger, full, almost full screen carousel. And of course, again, we can just play the images or play the videos rather within that frame. So it's a great widget, but there is a lot of setup involved here. So let me jump into Muse and run through it really quickly. So the first thing I'll do is just hop onto the Muse Themes website and let's download the widget. So I'm just logged in, hit download, and I'll open it up with Adobe Muse. Okay, perfect. So the video carousel widget is in our library folder and let's drag it out on the page. Okay, so as I drop this widget on the page, you can see that we have two components involved. We have the actual video player itself, with, which is this larger frame up above. And on the flyout panel here, we have some settings for styling that player. And then below that, we have this play button. And this is actually the video loader. So the video loader is what allows you to actually input the videos and the sources of those videos. Now you can duplicate this loader to have as many videos as you want. So there really is an unlimited potential for you to host as many videos as you want in here. One thing I'll recommend is your hosting provider may not support the bandwidth required to self-host a ton of videos. So we always recommend using a provider like YouTube or Vimeo as things just work better that way and you have less issues. Let's go ahead and set this up. The first thing we'll do is input some videos into the video loader. So at the top here, working our way down, we have the number of videos. I'm gonna set this to two and we'll just input two videos here. So when we do that, of course, the third video grays out and we have video one and video two. So working our way down from the options, we have the video type, self-hosted, YouTube or Vimeo. I'm gonna set both of these to YouTube videos. Okay, and when I do that, I don't know if you noticed that, but you can see that the video source actually disappeared and we now get a video ID. So video source would have been if we wanted to, for example, host or point to a video that's already on the web. So perhaps it lives on your web server already. You do, of course, have an add file button for self-hosted videos as well. So you don't need to type in assets slash sample or anything like that. So let's go ahead and input the video IDs of the two videos that we're going to use. I have two YouTube videos here from our channel. So let's just snag those IDs from the YouTube URLs. So we'll go ahead and put in the first one here. I've just copied and pasting these in. Okay, there's our first. And I'll jump back to the browser and take the second. Okay, perfect. So once I've got those in place, we'll go ahead and work our way through the rest of the options. So next option we have is preview image browse. And what this does is it enables you to use a custom preview image on that slider. Now this is a great feature because you may not want to use what the video on YouTube has already as the screenshot. Now if you notice this little note at the top that says also using none for preview image field uses default video preview images for Vimeo and YouTube. So let's say I don't want to use a custom video or a custom screenshot here for our video. Let's just type none into the preview image. And what that'll do is just use the default one that we have on YouTube. So I'll type none on both of those, perfect. Now the next setting we have here is for the video title. And so it just says title of video one. So I'm just gonna call this Muse Themes Video One and we'll do the same thing down here. Muse Themes Video Two. Okay, perfect. So those are all the options we have here for setting up YouTube videos. Now, if I just change this to three, I'll run through the options for a self-hosted video. Of course, we have the ability to, again, change a preview image, but this button here that says Video Source Browse, when I click on that, it just kind of turns on the Browse Video Source button, and it grays out this Video Source link. So again, this would be for if you want to browse to a file on your computer, rather than actually pointing it to a link on the web. So I recommend using that if you're self-hosting the videos. 
That's the only real option that turns on and off if you go self-hosted. And then of course, Vimeo just uses the same settings as YouTube. You just input the ID. So I'm gonna turn off video three and just use these two. Okay, so now that I've got these two ready to go, let's go ahead and style the player. So that's it for the video loader. Now on the actual video itself, we have a few options. Let me move this over so you can see it a little bit better. So at the top, we have navigation buttons, settings, and style. So we've included some default buttons for you if you don't have the ability to customize or create your own buttons. Uh, many users do want to put in a little bit more branded buttons, but our default buttons are actually quite nicely styled. So. If you don't want to use our default ones, you can choose custom here. And then of course the add file buttons for custom play, custom previous and custom next all appear. So you can just click on add file and navigate to an image and it will use those buttons instead. For this demo, I'll just leave it on default. And then we have the carousel button color. So right now it's set to orange, which I'm okay with. We have the button opacity, of course, so transparency. So this is set to 50%. Now we have a couple of options. We have enable keyboard navigation and enable pagination. Well, keyboard navigation allows you to move forward and back in the carousel using your keyboard. So you'll probably want to leave that on all the time. And then pagination is the dots that you'll see at the bottom of the page. So if I jump back to the browser here and show you this demo again, you can see that on the bottom we have these three dots. And if we actually just click on them, it changes to the various um, videos within the carousel. So that's what the pagination dots do, or pagination rather. And so let me just leave that on for now and we'll leave the dot color set as orange. Okay, so now we have the video gallery styling. So these are things like fonts and font colors and then you know things like close buttons. So let's just change our title font to Montserrat like we do for all the demos. I'm gonna remove the capital there in case that causes some issues. We'll leave the font size set at 20 and the font color set to white, okay? Now the next option we have is for the poster images scale to fill. So what this means is if you're using a full width gallery or even just a little bit of a taller fixed width gallery, you probably want your poster images scaling to fill that full window. If you don't have that on, they will just scale to fit and you could end up with black bars on the sides. So let's just turn that on for now. Next up, we have the close button color. So let's just leave that set at orange. We have the close button background color. Now, if you remember on the demo, the close button was, let me jump back to the fixed width demo here and you'll see what the close button looks like. So if I play this video, there's a close button here up in the top right. So as you can see, it does have a kind of a foreground and a background color. So in Muse, I'll just leave this set to orange and I'll leave the background color set to gray. And I'm just gonna drop the size of that button down a little bit, okay? Next, we have the slideshow settings. So for the slideshow interval, this is the timing between transitions in the carousel. So right now it's set to 5,000. This is in milliseconds, so that would be five seconds. So we'll just leave it set to that. And the transition speed is the speed at which it changes to those. So right now it's half a second. So if you'd like to go a little bit slower, we can up it to say 1,000, and that'll take now one second before it transitions. So the last few options we have here are to enable the slideshow autoplay, which would just transition through the carousel automatically, which we'll just go ahead and leave on. And then we have an enable full width display button. So this is if you wanna do that full width gallery. So if we turn this on, it disables the option below for maximum slider width. So these two kind of need to be used um, depending on what your intention is with this gallery. So let me show you how this works. So we've got the gallery here and I've set it to about, let's say this is 960 pixels wide. Now if I preview the gallery at this size, and actually let's just go ahead and preview it and see how it looks. So it's appearing off to the left a little bit and it's not really taking up the space that we expected in that frame. And the reason for that is because in the gallery settings, it says the maximum slider width is set to 600 pixels. So let's just up that to 960, approximately the size of our frame. And you can see that the gallery actually changes on the canvas here. And if we preview that, preview that again in the browser, now you can see it's taking up the full area we expected. And of course, let's test functionality. If we 
move through our gallery, we have our front, our forward and back buttons. We have our pagination dots. And if we hit play, the video of course plays perfectly on YouTube and we can skip ahead and everything looks great. So let me show you the full width option now. If we jump back into Muse and let's just turn off the, or turn on the enable full width display just like that. And now we need to see this little note here that says slider container must be expanded to 100% width in the workspace for full width display. To define a maximum width while well, container is set to 100%, use setting below. So we have this set now on the options panel to 100% width. And the last thing we need to do is we need to just scale this frame to actually touch the right and the left sides of the browser. And it does kind of lock to that. The easiest way to do that is under the transform options here, just click 100% width and it will scale that bit. Okay, so now let's preview this again. And there, now you can see the carousel is taking up the full width of the browser and it's actually expanding and shrinking depending on what the browser size is. And of course, if we hit play here, the video plays on YouTube and we can close out of it and everything is looking really great. So that's the video carousel setup. There is a lot to it because this was actually quite a complicated widget to build in terms of tapping into both the Vimeo and the YouTube systems, but I think it came out really nicely. So go ahead and give it a shot. If you have any questions or concerns, please let us know. Thanks again, cheers.